The Elgato Stream Deck is a fantastic tool that increases productivity and convenience for streamers and content creators alike. It's also $150. Now this is the Proto Stream Deck, a DIY alternative to the Elgato Stream Deck for only $20 or £15. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build one. I think it's important to understand the typical usage scenario for one of these things since it has a similar purpose to the Elgato Stream Deck, but the execution is very different. The Elgato Stream Deck is, for the most part, better in every single way. You can quickly change the key's function, add folders, it has a small LCD for each button, it has direct integration with OBS NextSplit, the list goes on. So why bother making one yourself? Well, if you don't have the money or you can't justify the purchase, parting with $20 over $150 is a no-brainer. Also, whilst it doesn't have direct integration within OBS, I've made it so that it acts in the same way as if you did. This means that you can still use all the keys when playing a game in full screen mode. And lastly, it also doesn't conflict with any of the keys on your keyboard. We're not simply remapping the keys to some obscure key combination. That's not smart. Instead, these will mimic keys that aren't available on your keyboard so that you'll never have a problem with it pressing something that you don't want it to. You'll also learn some bare bones Visual Basic scripting along the way. Now, I'm not the first person to think of this. Taran VH actually made a tutorial on how to achieve a similar thing using Auto Hotkey and Lua Macros back in April 2016. The difference is that this will be a lot easier to set up and you'll only have to use one program as opposed to two. I've also had trouble getting Lua to recognize the macro keypad, which shouldn't help either, but again, you won't have a problem when setting it up. Now let's start with what you're going to need. You'll want a PC running Windows, which should be the same as the one running OBS in your game. It's kind of standard really. A keypad and some self-adhesive sticker paper. Oddly enough, on Amazon these are pretty expensive, but if you go on eBay you can find these really cheap. And you only need one sheet anyway. Now the keypad I chose was the Cena 22 key USB keypad, costing $20. I largely chose this because it just looked professional and has mechanical switches. It's also pretty cheap. This was supplied to me by Banggood, link down below, and I'd recommend it. If you wanted to, you could use any other keypad or even keyboards, and it will still work all the same. It really doesn't matter. So let's start by making a list of all the features that you want up to however many keys you have. In my case, I decided I wanted commands for starting the stream, stopping it, the same for recording and the replay buffer as well. I also wanted to save my highlights from the replay buffer, and being able to switch between scenes is also massively important for me, Furthermore, I wanted the ability to mute different devices beat by mic, the audio from Discord or TeamSpeak going into the stream, and even my gameplay. And finally, I wanted to be able to click a key and have it send an automated tweet to let my followers know that I'm streaming. So with that in mind, we're going to create the visual aspect of the stream deck. So start by opening Photoshop or GIMP, which is what we're using to create the labels that will stick onto the keys. We'll create a canvas the size of an A4 piece of paper being 210mm by 297mm, and it's important that you get these dimensions spot on for the size of the keys. So if you do have something like a vernier caliper, then use that to measure it. If you don't have that, then just use a ruler to measure the length and width of the keys. In my case, I had to measure three of them since there are only really three different dimensions. You have the square keys, the horizontally long key, and the vertically long key. When creating each key, use the rulers within the software and use the millimeter measurement. You can enable these in Photoshop by using Ctrl R, and then right clicking on them and selecting the unit. Using rulers within Photoshop, I was able to make a quadrilateral with the same dimensions as the real life keys. After you've done that, copy them enough times so that each key on the keypad is accounted for. You can now design each key by adding text and images. For the sake of speed, I'm going to include the one I made in the description, and if you use the same keypad as me, you won't need to change the dimensions or anything. Just so we're clear, these keys start and stop the stream, whereas the next two allow you to send custom tweets. There's two for separate messages, say one if you're about to start and the other if you've already started. And the next line has starting the replay buffer in OBS, followed by starting and stopping a local recording, and lastly a key to save that replay buffer capture. The three lines below that are scene switches for the intro, stream start, intermission, and stream end. And then you also have six custom scenes for things like main one, face cam only, gameplay only, etc. Lastly, the audio devices are for muting the gameplay, muting Discord, so that the stream can't hear it, and lastly, muting and unmuting your mic. I've chosen to have two separate keys for stream start and end, as well as the mute and unmute, so that you can be 100% sure that you've actually activated the key. 
if it were just one key, you might press the key thinking that you've muted your mic when you've actually pressed it twice and now what you're saying can be heard on stream. As for printing it, make sure that the printer doesn't do any sort of resizing to the image. Your icons won't fit otherwise. Once you've printed that, it's now time to cut them out. I wouldn't bother curving the edges since every time I tried that, it made it look a lot less professional, but just follow the lines and you'll be fine. Finally, stick them onto the keys. The next step is remapping the keys so that you can assign them to different functions within OBS. For this, we'll use a program called HRD Macros. This program has been replaced with Lua Macros, but I still find this easier to use and it's also free and portable, so there's no need to install anything. Start by downloading HRD Macros from the site in the description and extract it to its own folder. Place it anywhere you want. After you've done that, right click on the exe file and go to Properties, Compatibility, and run this program as administrator. You need to run this program as admin the first time it's launched so it doesn't spit an error your way. Now by checking this box, it'll also run it as admin every time it's launched, which is what you want. Once open, you'll notice a bunch of different tabs which might look a little confusing. The devices tab includes all of your keyboards and mice on your system, and these can be virtual or physical. The macros tab contains all the macros you've created, whereas the settings tab does exactly what it says. You can change the language, minimize it when launched, and so on. Lastly, help displays a portion of the documentation, which is remarkably useful. To create a macro, head into macros and click on new. In the edit macro section, this is where it will recognize your specific keyboard and that key pressed on that specific keyboard. We have to do this step as Windows treats all plugged in keyboards as one single keyboard. So if you start typing on one and then the other, Windows can't distinguish between the two. This way, if you remap the five key, it'll only remap the one for the macro keypad and not the one on your main keyboard as well. So let's just call this start recording and click on scan. This is where you can select the key on your macro keyboard with a label for start recording. Before you do this, make sure numlock is enabled. You should see a light. And now that we've told HD macros which button on the keyboard needs to be assigned, we're going to make it execute an action. There's a bit below which says send keyboard sequence and you could use that, but I found that OBS doesn't actually detect it when you're in game or even at all. So we're just going to add a small delay as that appears to be the only way to get it working. And in order to do that, you have to head into the scripted tab. It's important to understand why we're doing something rather than just copying it as it will make it a lot easier when you want to change something or make a custom action. Doing something like HRD macros .send keys followed by your stuff and speech marks will send the keys immediately one after the other as fast as it can. Now because OBS doesn't like this, we've added a 50 millisecond delay which works and will also place that delay between each additional keystroke if you add more. In order to do this, we need to type HRD macros .send keys slow followed by the keys and speech marks, a comma and then the delay in milliseconds. You also need to compile the script every time you change something. If you don't do the normal keys but also modify, then simply add a plus for shift, the indice symbol for control, and the percent for alt. For example, doing plus G will do shift G. You can also modify an entire group by using only one modifier. For example, plus GH will do shift G followed by the letter H. However, plus brackets GH brackets will shift both G and H together. Now, key names are keys that aren't represented by a single character. This is your enter key, escape, backspace, the F keys and so on that have to be surrounded by braces, else it will just output the characters in that order. For example, if you just type in F12, it will do shift F to get a capital F, followed by the number one and then the number two. To get the actual F12 key, you have to do brace, F12, brace, and that'll allow it to work properly. Here's where I came across some problems. As it turns out, and I can't believe I've only just realized this as I'm writing the script, is that the top three keys for this keypad can't be assigned. I'm not sure why, but HID macro seems to ignore them. This means that we lose out on that functionality for those three. I decided being able to start and stop the stream as well as send a tweet was important, so I just swapped them out with the scene switches for scene four, five, and six. No biggie. You can see the new layout on screen now. Anyway, with that explanation out of the way, we're gonna be using the F13 to F24 keys for our remapping. This is because these aren't available on a standard keyboard that only has F1 to F12, and therefore aren't default binds for any other program. OBS and many applications will still detect them though, but you won't have any collisions within games. Here's the problem though, F13 to F24 only accounts for 12 out of the 18 keys on that keypad, 
and because of that required 50 millisecond delay between each keystroke, we can't just add a control modifier to the F key to make the keystroke unique. What I mean by this is that if you send control F13 with the delay, OBS will detect it as control F13 and also F13 by itself afterwards, which means that it'll activate two functions, which is what you don't want. The same happens with Alt and Shift 2. I've tried adding a delay beforehand so that it doesn't put it between each keystroke, but it doesn't seem to work. This only really leaves us with having to use real keys. Sending number pad keys won't work because they're detected as a standard numbers above QWERTY, which are very common in games, and so we're going to have to resort to using the F1 to F4 keys. With that said, we'll try and use as few real keys as possible. And so here's the final line of code of replacing the F13 key with the one on screen now. Do this for all the different functions of which there's 16, and click on save configuration. Alternatively, you could just download my config file in the description, and to get that working, just download the text file, place it in the HD macros root directory, and replace the one that's there. From there, reassign each key with the function, which shouldn't take any longer than five minutes. That way you don't have to retype each of the different scripts for each one. The two for Twitter are left blank because we don't need to execute a function, but rather a different script. The one on screen is the one I'll be using for myself, for now at least. You have to be signed into Twitter for this to work, and what it will start by doing is opening Chrome and heading to Twitter.com. From there, it'll wait 5 seconds to make sure the site is loaded before pressing the end key, which is Twitter's hotkey for creating a new tweet. You'll then wait an additional 1.5 seconds before typing your message. At the end, you can manually review it and click send. For this to work, you can't be in a game itself, but doing anything else is fine. I'm working on a way to get it to work with the Twitter API so that you don't have to do this, and I'll post that once finished, but I'm still working on it. Now that you've assigned all the different functions to each key, we want to make it work with OBS. Now OBS runs in a way that hotkeys in general won't work if you're in a game. I'd assume this is because the game gets first access to those keystrokes and therefore OBS doesn't detect them being triggered. But a really easy workaround is to launch OBS as an administrator. Similar to what we did with HD macros, head into the installation folder, right click properties and go into compatibility, then just select run this program as the administrator. Finally, to assign the hotkeys in OBS, open OBS and go into settings and then into the hotkeys tab. From there, just press the keys into the right section. For example, on the start and stop replay buffer, I selected a key that will execute that keystroke being F13. Do this for all your other ones like record, stream, save replay and so on. Now for the scene switches, press the correct key where it says switch to scene. Repeat this for your other scenes and now we'll move on to audio. Your OBS audio configuration will definitely be different to mine, but in my case, desktop audio represents the game, Astro Mix Amp represents my Discord audio, or the one from TeamSpeak which I send it to, and Mic and Aux is my microphone. So for each of the different audio devices you can see mute and unmute, and just assign those buttons to the right one as you can see me do on screen now. And that's it, you're all set to go. Just make sure that HD macros is running in the background when you want to use your DIY stream deck. So just have it open when you're playing a game or, you know, whatever. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out if you're looking to make your own DIY stream deck for only a fraction of the cost. This is by no means a direct replacement, but rather a DIY solution that allows me to do everything I'd use the Elgato Stream Deck for anyways. To make things easier for everyone, I've included my config file for HD macros, as well as the template for the labels in the description of this video. If you like the video, then give it a thumbs up, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or tweet at me, at ProtoAmp. This has been Proto, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Back, back, back from the dead.